Welcome to Allergy Town Population. <laughs> I'm working on a video series. I don't know if you call it a series if each video is like two minutes long. <clears throat> uh, I guess there's probably a way to edit them together, but like. I don't know, lol. Oh boy. The headache is just like, it's like right here. But it's like four inches back. <clears throat> Do you have three-dimensional headaches? My wife was saying that her headaches are like on the surface. <sighs> oh man, I had kind of a long day. We were <clears throat> tortoise sitting, and it's uh, not sure what happened. It seems like he got out, but some people didn't know he was there. Either way, he was gone, and some people picked him up and tried to sell him into a white slavery. Um, but the cops were able to find out as one concerned citizen was willing to drop a dime. This is not, this is not fake. This actually happened. <laughs> a police officer was very amused as well. Uh, but we got him back and uh, I was like vigilantly watching him on a security camera all yesterday. <clears throat> so this is some some excitement. Whew. I did get a big uh, I finished a big release for one of my projects and uh, has incorporated a bunch of features and uh, it was pretty nice. Uh, GitHub definitely I had talked about doing GitHub for individual project or Git I should say I'm not using GitHub it's a private project uh, Git for solo projects just didn't make much sense to me and now I'm definitely starting to see, see the benefits a lot of the <clears throat> The layout, well, a lot of the environment kind of restricts what I can do as far as testing is concerned. So I wound up just setting up a separate space on the same box so that all the, you know, the entire environment is exactly the same except for the directory path. <clears throat> Even the depth is, is the same. Uh, but once I did that, I started working in a separate section and, you know, building updates in that separate section, developing a merge, or developing a, a branch. And it's kind of cool because during that period I get to figure out problems or find weird things and, uh, <clears throat> I guess, test more aggressively. And then when I'm done, you know, wrap it up, make sure everything looks kind of nice, and, and then merge and then pull it down uh, to the production box <clears throat> so it's it's almost like more cathartic I don't know feels good man bigger updates versus smaller tweaks So yeah, that was nice. And now it feels like I'm ready to, to hit the next section a lot harder. <clears throat> so pretty cool. Oh, my brain. My brain.
really like spicy food. So when I get like this, I get tempted to do crazy things with spicy food. Normally it's just like, <clears throat> grab the, the ghost pepper salsa, it's not even salsa, ghost pepper sauce, and just put like five drops into some soup or something, or some, some simple ramen, and just let nature take its course. I saw the sriracha and I'm like, I don't know that I think about it. Well, I saw the sriracha and my first thought was like, what if I snorted the sriracha? Which is obviously a bad idea. Or is it? The chili would be delivered directly to the nasal cavity and immediately facilitate, uh, you know, drainage. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, that's just crazy. <clears throat> But then I think it's just capsaicin. I mean, technically, sriracha would be a bad choice. It has lots of other stuff in it. There's a lot of sugar, actually. Uh, but it tastes great. <laughs> it's awesome. It would be just a, just a matter of choice. <laughs> but delivering uh, <laughs> delivering capsaicin to your nasal cavities uh, is uh, actually something that happens probably daily, uh, in the form of pepper spray. It's an aerosolized capsaicin that gets delivered across the face, gets into your, your, wafts up into your nostrils, and then immediately you're crying and draining and all of that stuff. That's all happening. These are features, not bugs. <laughs> oh. Of course, the pepper spray is pretty long-lasting. Uh, wouldn't be wouldn't be a good choice. I mean, I'm not there yet. It would take a it'd probably take a few days for me to get there. <laughs> but it's it's just really nasty, and it gets in your ears, and you can't swallow, and <clears throat> it is just an unhappy time. Yeah, but our, our former pastor's wife was leading music, and uh, she was talking about how she used to get really bad sinuses, allergies, and, you know, congestion. Oh, boy. And uh, she said she went to a chiropractor. The chiropractor did, like, jujitsu on her head, uh, or ninjutsu, did, like, the hand thingies. <laughs> And she just drained. And I can see that. I've seen the... I've definitely read the online suggestions. Uh, for like, pressing here and then pushing up with your tongue. Because this whole section is kind of... Uh, I don't know, it's supposed to be not directly attached or something. I don't know. Your face is not... Your face is not directly attached. I don't know what's going on right now. Uh, I was doing a video of the building signum this morning. And I'm probably going to release that pretty soon. And I, I wouldn't say I got loopy. I just... Uh, ugh. Brain. It was okay, though. It wound up being kind of funny. So... <laughs> <laughs> it had talking nippers in it. The little nippers, the dikes, uh, end cutters. I don't know. I use all those terms interchangeably, and it confuses people. <laughs> oh, boy. Is this entertaining? Is everyone entertained? Are you not entertained? Oh, man. Oh. I did have a pretty cool Emacs excursion. Uh, I was on a uh, device. <clears throat> I was on a device that had the uh, the touch screen, touch screen needed to be uh, rotated. Yeah, the display was already rotated, 
It's a, it was a Raspberry Pi. And they're, I guess it's a bug? I don't know what it is. Uh, when you do the display rotate, you can rotate, you know, 0, 90, uh, 180, 270. <laughs> But when you do the LCD rotate, you can only rotate top and bottom, you know, 0 and 180. And if you use the other one to get the 90 degrees, it doesn't include the touchscreen modification. So there's a way to change X input to invert the, the X and Y axes <clears throat> for the touch input, but I didn't know what the, the uh, language the syntax I didn't know the syntax so I was on the box with my uh, in Emacs and I knew that there was I had something similar some similar code on uh, my server so in Emacs I tramp to the server and tramp is a, uh, a nice little I don't know. It it connects to the box. It grabs the file. It basically is an SCP front end, uh, but it SCPs the file back to you, and then you edit it locally. And then when you write the file or save the file, it saves it on the far side. <clears throat> so that's pretty neat. So I grabbed the file down. I was looking at it, uh, and I realized that it had a uh, a link to a wiki that had more explanation of the syntax. So I'm like, all right, follow the link. And in Emacs again, you just put your cursor over the link and then uh, meta X U E W W <clears throat> and it launches, uh, it connects to that website and pulls down the data for you in a presentable, you know, format. So I'm scrolling through the notes on the web page in Emacs and I find what I think is what I'm looking for. So I copy the data, I yank the data, or I forget what they call it in Emacs, whatever. I copy the data within Emacs, I flip back to the script that I'm making, I drop the drop that format, that syntax into that file, <clears throat> and then I need to choose the correct device, or get the, the proper name for the device. So I open a shell, Again, in Emacs, I run the, the command, which I got straight from the web page. I get output of the device ID, copy it within Emacs, go back to it, drop it into those commands, and then run them within Emacs. All within Emacs. Pretty amazing. Uh, uh, since I've been using Emacs more accessibly, full disclosure, I've probably had three crashes. I'm gonna say four, maybe four. Uh, it gets, there are some activities that Emacs seems to do that are engrossing. But most of what it does is kind of on the back end and you're, you're capable of control G canceling pretty much whatever it's doing. But there's some stuff that happens kind of on the back end. And if those processes get stuck for whatever reason, uh, likely because most of my work is remote and the remote stuff is not, doesn't seem to be super robust. But uh, that said, four crashes out of all of that utility that I've been getting out of it and for months and months of working with it, I'll still take it. I'll take it. I've crashed Vim a few times, but... Uh, definitely not as much. <clears throat> so Emacs is pretty neat. Neato, neato burrito, cheeto, pachito, brain, deflato. Oh boy. Alright. Super interesting, I'm sure. Have a nice Friday.